you know if you have chronic inflammation? Like if you're not feeling bad enough to say, oh, that's me, you know, I'm stiff, I'm sore, I have brain fog, all these things. I wanna help you to understand like what degree of inflammation you might be in. So first, when you have a mild loss of your immune system's tolerance and inflammation starts to take over, you're going to develop new food and chemical sensitivities. Gosh, I never used to be react to pollen, but good grief, you know, I'm every year now I'm having more reactions or I used to be able to eat this food and be fine, but no more. Gosh, I used to be able to walk down the chemical aisle of the grocery store and it was no big deal. And now whew, I can't get through there fast enough. So that is your tap on the shoulder that you're starting to develop this intolerance. Now, when you have moderate loss of immune tolerance, now we start seeing food and chemical sensitivities worsen. Now you're starting to even maybe have reactions to some of these things that take a minute to turn off. You know, they're not just there, you feel bad for a little bit and then they're gone. Once you walk down that aisle of, uh, you know, chemicals in the grocery store, you might feel bad for an hour or two after that happens. Then when you get the se severe, the most severe form of immune intolerance, that's when an autoimmune process starts. And autoimmunity is when your own immune system is attacking your um, healthy tissue, you know, in your body somewhere. You can have uh, diabetes as an autoimmune condition, arthritis, uh, lupus, Sjogren's, eczema, psoriasis. These are all examples of autoimmune conditions. Now, medically, a lot of times, if a doctor suspects an autoimmune condition, they'll run a test called ANA. That stands for anti-nuclear antibodies. It's test antibodies are what your immune system produces to fight something. So ANA is a very generalized look at um, do we have an autoimmune process? Because to test for what might be going on can require a lot of tests. So oftentimes docs will run an ANA and then they'll go, okay, there's something here. Then they'll specifically test for Sjogren's or lupus or, or you know, rheumatoid arthritis or whatever it is. And then when those tests come back negative, I've had so many people where their doctors said, okay, it's not a problem. You know, your ANA is high, but we've tested all these other things and you don't have an autoimmune disease. And this is where philosophically we kind of miss the boat. It's so much better to start handling something when you get the tap on the shoulder than when you get the two by four. So if your ANA is high or has been high, pay attention to that and really take the steps to reduce inflammation in your body, which means cutting down the toxic loads, increasing your antioxidants, uh, you know, and, and your, um, you know, phytochemicals and all the things that I've talked about in these other videos on inflammation. Just take that as if you're getting a positive ANA, you're in this most severe loss of immune tolerance. So you're past the mild, you're past the moderate. Now you're into the severe category and we do not want to go down that road. So inflammation of your nervous system is a very key indicator of your health. And when I say inflammation of your nervous system, your nervous system includes your brain, which of course is one of the most important components you have in your body. Uh, and it includes all the nerves that run around on your body. You guys, this is one of your most important communication networks. If you've got inflammation in your nerves, think about the thousands of times, you know, even in, a five minute period that you're sending and receiving messages on your nerves. And if you've got inflammation in the nerves, these cannot happen very well. And the whole, you know, uh, uh, snowball is rolling down the hill and gathering momentum. So I wanna give you the symptoms that let you know where you are on this scale of neuroinflammation, brain and nerve inflammation. So let's talk about the subtle ones. These are the taps on the shoulder. 
Brain fog. Your thoughts are hazy. You have trouble recalling things. Noticeable variations in mental speed. You um, go to do a task or solve a problem or whatever and you got to think about it for a moment and you think, geez, that used to just pop into my head, but it's not anymore. This is another subtle sign. Uh, reduced brain endurance. I used to be able to study for X amount of time. Now I'm getting tired after a shorter period of time. I just cannot use my brain and focus my brain as much as I used to be able to. Then we have uh, brain fatigue after exposure to specific chemicals, scents, or pollutions. So, you know, I mentioned going down the uh, chemical aisle in the grocery store, or you walk into a home that's using plug-ins, and you find, golly, you know, I'm developing a bigger intolerance to these things. I know they're toxic, but now I'm starting to feel bad when I'm around them. Then um, brain fatigue after exposure to specific food proteins. So gosh, I ate this meal and I feel brain fog. You know, I ate this meal and I'm tired. Those are, uh, you guys, these are the taps on the shoulders. These are not even the severe signs. So now let's talk about your moderate symptoms. Now this is getting worse. This is where depression comes in. I'm, I'm depressed. You know, yes, there can be a significant um, life situation that can elicit feelings of depression, but when people kind of feel depressed for quote unquote no reason, I don't know why I feel depressed. I'm just feeling depressed. This is a moderate sign of neuroinflammation. Inability to concentrate, especially for long periods of time. Think about all the kids that get diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. They just can't concentrate. At young ages, we can have this brain and nervous system inflammation. We can and we do. Sleepiness. Gosh, I can't keep myself awake. You know, I know I slept, you know, eight hours last night and I should be okay, but I'm just tired. Then um, going along with that, we have an increased demand for sleep. Like you must get your eight or more hours or you just can't function. These are in the moderate category. Then we have just fatigue and lethargy. This is where your chronic fatigue syndrome type thing comes in or you just, you know, you're thinking, golly, I cannot get myself to pull through the things I used to be able to do. You know, back in the day, this is where Mother's Little Helper, you know, came from. This today, this is where your afternoon cold brew coffee, you know, comes in because you just cannot do it without that stimulation. The next step I do see in people, and it's very sad to me, and that is a lack of motivation. So a lot of people will describe, yes, I'm tired, but you know what? I'm just not motivated to do anything. You guys, that's a moderate neuroinflammation sign. Loss of appetite is another one. And then just an inability to be physically active. Golly, you know, I wake up in the morning, I think, okay, today I'm going to get to the gym or today I'm going to do that hike or whatever it is. And by the end of the day, you just cannot make yourself do it. So all of those are the moderate symptoms. Now let's talk about the severe symptoms of um, neuroinflammation. Confusion and disorientation, dementia, personality or behavior changes, coma, seizures, difficulty actually speaking, trembling, tremors, involuntary twitching. I did a video a while back where I said, you know, just stick out your tongue and see, can you hold it? Or does it just start to tremble and undulate? So these are the severe symptoms. So just realize if you have depression, you can't concentrate, you're sleeping all the time, you're so fatigued, you have no motivation, uh, you can't be physically active, you're knocking on the door of confusion, disorientation, dementia, personality, behavior changes, all these other things. So it's, 
What I struggle with a lot of times is that things become so normal around us that we stop paying attention to them. Oh, everybody feels this way. Everybody has brain fog. Everybody's tired by the end of a work day. You guys, take it seriously. Don't worry about it, but take it seriously and do the things you need to do to handle inflammation in your body. I'm doing a webinar on inflammation where I'm going to talk about solutions and, and things you can do, you know, how to recognize that you have it, what might be causing it, and what kinds of things can you actually do. Also, how do you measure it? What kinds of lab tests can you ask your doctor for? What are other tests that you can use to determine what degree of inflammation you have, along with what can you do to handle it. So this webinar is going to be on July the 11th. That's a Thursday evening. I'm doing it at 7 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. However, if you can't do that time, you know, for the time zone that you're in, this is going to be available as a replay. So comment, um, heal, if you'd like to heal from inflammation in the comments, or check out the link tree. I've got a link to sign up for the webinar there. I really look forward to seeing you there. Do not let chronic inflammation rob you of your health and your joy.